as you know training series related to fire safety is in progress we have discussed in the previous training sessions about the common sources of fuel common sources of ignition causes of fire and explosion fire and explosion risk from flammable materials and in the very last training session we were talking about causes of fires at home and as i promised today i'm going to discuss about fire detection system and in the upcoming training session we will discuss about the fire alarm system dear friends and colleagues we are pursuing systematically how to prevent fire incidents and how to upkeep fire safety within the project sites as well as in our domestic residential premises so let's get started to detect a fire fire detectors are in use fire detectors sense one or more of the products are phenomena resulting from fire such as smoke heat radiation light or gas in dwellings smoke detectors are often stand alone devices in non domestic building fire detection will typically take the form of a fire alarm system incorporating one or more of the automatic devices which we are going to discuss now what are these devices in general these are four in number number 1 heat detector number 2 smoke detector number 3 flame detector and number 4 fire gas detector let us discuss now each type one by one first of all we will talk about heat detector the heat detector is a fire alarm device designed to respond when the convected thermal energy of a fire increases the temperature of a light sensitive element the thermal mass and the conductivity of the element regulate the rate flow of heat into the element all heat detectors have this thermal lag heat detectors have two main classifications of operation rate of rise and fixed temperature the heat detector is used to help in the reduction of damage to property it is triggered when temperature increases do you know what is the function of fixed temperature heat detector this is the most common type of heat detector fixed temperature detectors operate when the heat sensitive eutectic alloy reaches the eutectic point changing state from a solid to a liquid thermal lag delays the accumulation of heat at the sensitive element so that a fixed temperature device will reach its operating temperature some time after the surrounding air temperature exceeds that temperature the most common fixed temperature point for electrically connected heat detectors is 136 degree fahrenheit or 58 degree centigrade technological developments have enabled the perfection of detectors that activate at a temperature of 117 degree fahrenheit or 47 degree centigrade increasing the available reaction time and margin of safety so whenever during the interview someone is going to ask about fixed temperature you have plenty of information to tell what is fixed temperature heat detector and what is their function and how it functions the second type of heat detector is rate of rise heat detector rate of rise heat detectors operate on a rapid rise in element temperature of 12 degree to 15 degree fahrenheit or 6.7 degree to 8.3 degree centigrade increase per minute irrespective of the starting temperature this type of heat detector can operate at a lower temperature fire condition then would be possible if the threshold were fixed it has two heat sensitive thermocouples or thermistors one thermocouple monitors heat transferred by convection or radiation 
the other response to ambient temperature the tact response when first temperature increases relative to the other rate of rise detector may not respond to low energy release rates of slowly developing fires to detect slowly developing fires combination detectors add a fixed temperature element that will ultimately respond when the fixed temperature element reaches the design threshold so these are the information are the specifications about rate of rise heat detector and fixed temperature heat detector these are the examples of rate of rise detector and fixed temperature detector fixed temperature detector on the right hand side and rate of rise detector on left hand side if you find any one of these detectors in a building or in an office you can easily identify which one is rate of rise detector and which one is fixed temperature detector let us jump on the next stop now dear friends and colleagues you are on the platform of safety first life today we are discussing about fire detection system after discussing heat detector let us discuss now what is the function of a smoke detector a smoke detector is a device that senses smoke typically as an indicator of fire commercial security devices issue a signal to a fire alarm control panel as part of a fire alarm system while household smoke detectors also known as smoke alarms generally issue a local audible or visual alarm from the detector itself this is the example of smoke detector how it looks like on the right hand side this is the way how a smoke detector works there are lenses alarm alarm device photo cell smoke particles and light catcher as we discussed about the two types of heat detectors there are three types of smoke detectors number 1 ionization smoke detector number 2 photoelectric or optical smoke detector and number 3 carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide detection let us discuss each type one by one first of all ionization smoke detector an ionization smoke detector uses a radio isotope typically americium 241 to ionize air the difference due to smoke is detected and an alarm is generated ionization detectors are more sensitive to the planning stage of fires than optical detector while optical detectors are more sensitive to fires in the early smoldering stage on the slide down below right side this is an example of ionization smoke detector what is photoelectric or optical smoke detector and how it works a photoelectric or optical smoke detector contains a source of infrared visible or ultraviolet light typically an incandescent light bulb or light emitting diode in lens and a photoelectric receiver typically a photodiode in spark type detectors all of these components are arranged inside a chamber where air which may contain smoke from a nearby fire flows in large open areas such as atria and auditoriums optical beam or projected beam smoke detectors are used instead of a chamber within the unit a wall mounted unit emits a beam of infrared or ultraviolet light which is either received and processed by a separate device or reflected back to the receiver by a reflector so these are the different parts and the way how optical smoke detector works but in some types particularly optical beam types the light emitted by the light source passes through the air being tested and reaches the photo sensor the received light intensity will be reduced by absorption due to smoke airborne dust or other substances the circuitry detects the light intensity and generates the alarm if it is below a specified threshold potentially due to smoke down below this is the shape how 
optical, a photoelectric smoke detector looks like. And on the left side, these are the different components and the circuit of photoelectric or optical smoke detector. But remember, in other types, typically chamber types, the light is not directed at the sensor, which is not illuminated in the absence of particles. If the air in the chamber contains particles, smoke or dust, the light is scattered and some of it reaches the sensor, triggering the alarm. Do you know the main components of optical smoke detector? Number one, optical chamber. Number two, cover. Number three, case molding. Number four, photodiode detector. And number five, infrared LED. Dear friends and colleagues, you are watching Safety First Life. If you are new on this channel, kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon. Let us discuss now the third type of fire smoke detector. That is carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide detection. Carbon monoxide sensors detect potentially fatal concentrations of carbon monoxide gas, which may build up due to faulty ventilation, where there are combustion appliances such as heaters and cookers. Although there is no uncontrolled fire, out with the appliance. High levels of carbon dioxide, CO2, may indicate a fire and can be detected by a carbon dioxide sensor. Such sensors are often used to measure level of carbon dioxide, which may be undesirable, but not indicative of a fire. This type of sensor can also be used to detect and warn of the much higher levels generated by a fire. After discussing the heat detectors, smoke detectors, let us discuss now the third type, that is flame detector. A flame detector is a sensor designed to detect and respond to the presence of a flame or fire. Responses to a detected flame depend on the installation, but can include sounding an alarm, deactivating a fuel line such as a propane or a natural gas line, and activating a fire suppression system. When used in applications such as industrial furnaces, their role is to provide confirmation that the furnace is properly lit. In these cases, they take no direct action beyond notifying the operator or control system. A flame detector can often respond faster and more accurately than a smoke or a heat detector due to the mechanisms it uses to detect the flame. After the discussion of heat detectors, smoke detectors, flame detectors, and their respective types, let us discuss now the fourth type of fire detector, that is fire gas detector. Dear friends and colleagues, there are four basic types of portable gas sensor. Number one, catalytic combustion. Number two, electrochemical. Number three, infrared. And number four, photo ionization detectors, PID. When any of these sensors sense a gas, the electronics will change the sensor output into a reading on the display showing the level of gas exposure. Do you know how? Fire gas detector works. A combustible gas detector is used to measure the concentration of certain gases in a specified area through the use of infrared point. Ultrasonic, electrochemical, or semiconductor sensors. If a sensor's response surpasses the preset level and along, light or combination of signals will warn the user that there is a fire. Now it's the responsibility of the user, the occupant of the building, the workers of the work site to respond to the fire promptly and combat as per their proficient skills and the available resources to extinguish a fire. Either it is portable or a fixed firefighting 
arrangement as we discuss today about the foil detection system in the upcoming training session we will discuss about the different types of fire alarms system and that's all for now training session is over if you have any question please ask in the comment section down below thanks for watching hope to see you soon till then take care and good luck